Hello everyone, thank you so much for sitting and watching and today's video is the video that everyone has been uh, texting me about uh, it's related to work permits in Sweden um, I know some people uh, uh, are trying hard to find jobs in different countries and Sweden is one of the destinations but on the other hand we are having lots of people who are um, just sitting, not climbing the mountain but just sitting and thinking uh, that they will be reaching the summit in a way or another but by just sitting down doing nothing except showing their interest in coming to Sweden again the labor is extremely challenging it's extremely uh, uh, competitive and again this is due to number one that Sweden is not a big country it's a, a small country it has a very uh, strong economy uh, technology is uh, something that is uh, uh, it's con Sweden is considered one of the, the highest country in music technology and above all it needs very very well educated and skilled people so uh, when this is something I will talk again briefly about the people who are trying to come to Sweden with limited skills and education it's impossible for them to find job for a simple reason uh, Sweden has received uh, different immigrants in uh, the last five to seven years. They already have a, f uh, a full uh, 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 labor that can be doing all the limited skill for, uh, for, they can be doing all the work that's a little bit need limited skilled people, or they have uh, a full uh, pool full of people who can be doing the jobs that doesn't need high, highly educated people. So they are, uh, you can, from inside the, the locals now, they are totally saturated. They do not need more people who can do the normal labor jobs. They need, we, there is a big, huge shortage uh, in Sweden related to more technical uh, uh, jobs. So, uh, for example, uh, doctors, nurses, um, of course, IT, um, uh, engineers, policemen. So, there are shortages, but the people who are trying to come to Sweden, they do not have the qualifications that fit these jobs. So, everyone who is trying to, uh, to find a job with simple or limited uh, uh, training or education, unfortunately, Sweden is never the right country for them. That's why when they try to apply or try to a post asking for any job, they can hardly find anyone getting back to them and back again. Why? Because Sweden now is saturated with people who can be doing the non-technical jobs. And now they need different niche of new employees coming to the country. And we and this is something that I have been uh, mentioning before in my videos. Swedish is mandatory. Yes, everyone speaks English, but Swedish is mandatory. That's why most of the new employees, except if they were uh, coming in companies that doesn't need people who, to be speaking Swedish, but most of the time these people are being outsourced outsourced from abroad, and the, it is jobs that doesn't require Swedish. But this is. It is there in Sweden, but this is not the norm. But anyone who wants to come uh, to, to work, they always has to have an intensive Swedish course. Sometimes they, um, the companies offer it in their countries before the people move because, to cut cost. Uh, some people who want to, for example, to be um, uh, uh, studying something related to medicine or, or physics or biology, they come and they start, for example, in Uppsala University or in Lund University, they study uh, intensive uh, one year academic uh, Swedish, intensive Swedish that can ha help them in studying uh, further uh, in their field and then working. Uh, you will never find, for example, uh, any uh, uh, medicine, uh, anyone who is working in the medical department if he was a pharmacist, if he was a biologist, or if he was a doctor, you will never find someone, anyone who is not speaking fluent Swedish. There are immigrants who are, uh, uh, of course, working in this field or this sector, but they have studied uh, intensive Swedish for a long time, and then they studied in the same field, 
uh, for some year so that so they can be qualified to uh, to start a job in Sweden. Um, so this is an intro again about the job market in Sweden. We will the first and foremost that I will want to start with, and this is one of the things that about advertisement. There is the, uh, maybe some people have heard or searched and found this uh, uh, unhappy, uh, ugly news that there are lots of uh, there are many people who came and started working in Sweden and after two years they couldn't be renewing their uh, work permit visa. This is due to the error that happened from the beginning from the employer that the, any uh, any job that is being advertised. Uh, uh, or if we can, no, sorry. If any uh, employer wants to be advertising for any job, he has to be advertising it for ten days first in the um, uh, in the Swedish in the Swedish public employment uh, service, uh, which is the Arbetsförmedling first, and it has to be and this uh, pool or this website of jobs, it's uh, people in Europe and in Switzerland have access to. So they have to advertise in this website first. And for after 10 days, if they didn't get any uh, employees or they didn't find the right employee, they can start uh, recruiting uh, new employees from abroad. There was this uh, very famous um, story last year for uh, uh, one employee who uh, work in a technical company, he bought a house, he, he learned Swedish, everything is fine. When he wanted to be up, um, extending his um, permit in Sweden, he got a decision to be deported. And then the, the reason was that the, he applied uh, to a job through LinkedIn, not through the Swedish public uh, employment service. And there was a big, big propaganda about this story last year that the person has to lose his job. He has, I think, to sell his house. And he had a, a very, very bright uh, career in Sweden, but it ended up that he was deported. I think now they are, he's trying to um, reapply again. But uh, there is also this funny thing that if you are trying to come back to Sweden, you couldn't do it within six months. You have to wait for longer. Some people say, oh, this is not a, a, a true uh, a regulation, but some people still face the, this problem that if they are trying to come after six months or within six months uh, trying to reapply, especially because of technical errors from the migration of Swedish migration office uh, side, they still have the problem that they have to be waiting six months or more. So this is the first thing. So um, now we have talked about the, uh, the advertisement. This is the first thing that you need to make sure if you even you ha are trying to apply for a job through LinkedIn, that the employer, when you are talking to the employer, you have to check that this job has been uh, uh, published in the uh, Swedish uh, employment uh, uh, agency, the Arbetsförmedling first. So the second thing, you have to uh, have a valid, uh, of course, a valid passport. Uh, when you uh, when you are moving to Sweden, there is another thing which is also very very critical, and uh, I'm going to be referring here to the the uh, migration office website. Offer terms of employment that are at least on par with those set by Swedish collective agreements, or which are customary with this uh, within the uh, occupation or industry. Um, Offer a salary that is at least on par with those set by Swedish collective agreements or which is customary within the occupation or industry. What does this mean? Because I think Sweden here is very is a, a little bit exceptional in this uh, in this uh, regulation. So, for example, you know, lots of employers like to get cheap employees. And here I mean by cheap that they don't want to pay them much. If they are going to be paying for a, 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 a Swedish uh, person. And here I don't I mean Swedish, it doesn't have to be Swedish person, like an, a Swede, a, 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 an employer within, who is living or in Sweden, okay? Um, a Swedish citizen or, yeah, uh, for the locals, because I don't want to say the word Swedish. I don't always mean the Vikings. I mean, Swedish employer, it means anyone who has the right to work in Sweden within Sweden. So. 
Sometimes the employer try to get cheap uh, uh, labor. So for example, instead of uh, uh, hiring someone uh, from Sweden and paying him uh, 5,000 euros, which is about 50,000 uh, 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 Swedish krona, they try to get someone um, from Pakistan because they are going to be taking instead of 5,000, 3,000 uh, uh, euros. This doesn't work. Because according to the, in this industry or this field, the, the, uh, there is a certain regulation that a person should working in this field should be taking from 35 to 50,000 uh, 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 Swedish krona, I will talk in euros, that he should be taking from 3.5 to 5,000 euros. If the employer start, uh, try to play smart, and um, hire someone from abroad so he can pay him or her 3,000 euros, he can come and then after two years, when he's trying to be extending his stay, uh, so, uh, his, uh, his permit, it will be refused because the, the, he didn't meet the, uh, the, 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 lead, the, the, the off, he didn't, he wasn't offered a salary that is at least on par with those set by Swedish collective agreements, because there are Swedish collective agreements, which agree that the, any job, this is the man, minimum, this is the maximum, because they, uh, um, they want to make sure that the people are being, uh, who are being, uh, working in this labor, that the, employee, the employers are not using or exploiting uh, employees. So you can find that people with very high skill are having a very low salary because they, the, the employer is trying to get the cheapest salary is being offered. That's why there is always the, um, the, uh, there is the collective agreement. And this is also another, uh, there was another interesting story about this. There was the uh, person in two, so, not only one person, so multiple people, in uh, 2017 or 18, he got salary. He was offered a salary that he accepted, but according to his skills, he should have been offered more uh, 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 higher salary. So when he tried to renew his, he came to Sweden and he studied Swedish and he had uh, his wife with him and they, they had a daughter here. When he went to renew his um, visa uh, because it's always two years visa it was rejected and he was deported he tried to appeal and um, lots of uh, different um, uh, 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 lots of different uh, activists and uh, and uh, newspapers and different people have tried to uh, get involved uh, to um, freeze this decision but even when he appealed to the court, the, um, the, the decision was upheld and he, it was upheld and it, he was uh, deported and he tried again to uh, be uh, applying for a um, work permit visa and I think he was back but after one year. I'm not sure, but this is um, uh, a little example why you shouldn't accept any offer you have to be checking if this uh, if this salary conform to the uh, Swedish collective agreements and of course it's very easy you can check it in, uh, 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 on different websites what is the minimum or the maximum for any uh, uh, job uh, the salary or the minimum or the maximum of any salary in Sweden another important thing the insurance and the holidays so Offer, um, I'm referring back to the uh, uh, Swedish Migration Office, offer a salary that is, no, sorry, uh, intended to provide health insurance, life insurance, occupational, in, um, uh, occupational injury insurance and occupational pension insurance when the employee begins to work. <sighs> Also, there is also another story. I'm, I'm trying to relate to different uh, uh, stories here because so it make it easier for people to understand. Sometimes the employer by mistake doesn't pay the right insurance and pension to the employee. So if this person, if we will say that Zach has been uh, employed by 
Spotify. And Zach came and, and with his wife and uh, and children and he's starting to work in Spotify. Everything is perfect. Everything is good. He knows that he is not the one who's paying the pension or the uh, insurance. It is the job of his employer to do this. Yeah. Then Zach uh, finished his two years um, contract and he said, OK, I'm not going to be working in Spotify anymore. I am going to go and work in Volvo. When he went to work in Volvo, and he went to the migration office. And this is another thing we will be talking about moving from one job uh, uh, to another. But this we'll speak about it a little bit later. But anyhow, that Zach. But anyhow, um, Zach, when he went to the migration office and told them, OK, here is my papers. Everything is good. I'm going to be changing my uh, company from Spotify to Volvo. He said, oh, sorry, we can't uh, offer you any extension. Why? Everything is right. I have paid. Um, my employer paid my pension and my insurance. Why shouldn't I uh, get uh, a renewal for my work permit uh, visa? The thing is, you couldn't get it for a simple reason: is that that your employer didn't pay the right insurance, and they are um, related to injury insurance. If you had a critical uh, accident or you had a life-threatening, uh, uh, life-threatening disease. He didn't pay the right insurance and he didn't pay your pension. He paid your pension, but not the right amount of pension according to your um, uh, job and salary. Okay, so then Zach say, okay, no problem. I will be paying for uh, the, the difference of the pension that hasn't been paid correctly by my uh, employer. But... The migration uh, office will say, even if you are, yes, you can be uh, retrospectively paying for the um, pension that you have in the right amount of pension that you have in, that your employer hasn't paid for, but you couldn't pay for the insurance. You couldn't pay for insurance saying, okay, yeah, you, you should have been paying this amount of money in case that you got um, uh, severely injured or had a life-threatening disease. You couldn't pay retrospectively for this health insurance. So what happened to that? The migration office uh, released a decision and this decision is rejection. And Zach has to leave the country because of a technical mistake that was done by the employer related to his insurance and his pension. Uh, Sadly to say that in 2017, there it was recorded that there was 18,000 technical error by the Swedish Migration Office and people had to be deported. Most of these people has been deported due to this uh, uh, technical um, uh, problem and technical error and they are called, uh, and uh, they are trying to, uh, now to change this law that if there was a technical or error uh, from the migration office side that uh, the person can still uh, be working and he has uh, his uh, visa uh, renewed until they solve the error. But before, if you, there is this error, they do not fix it and say you can wait till we fix it and we will see what will happen. No, if there was this error, they deport you and most of the time, they put, they, you have the decision that you have to live in four weeks. And it's a crisis if you have a, you own a house or anything. And then you can reapply for the job again, which of course, it's more difficult and more complicated. And so that's why now there is a different um, uh, law that if there was an error, the person can still get uh, uh, a renewal till they take the decision of what will be his stats. Um, another very important thing, and it was again a very famous story in 2018 or 2019, uh, someone who tried to, uh, uh, you know, it was an American uh, uh, partners, uh, they had their cafe, so um, 
they you know when you own your own business sometimes you want to work uh, day and night and you don't want to have any weekends or anything you are starting up your company and you are working a lot it's your own company and you are working in your own company yeah? so you want to be doing your best uh, in building up the company uh, these um, lovely american partners they were uh, deported because they didn't have enough holidays yes 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 i i can imagine or i can see you now with your joe's drops yes your, your joe has to drop sweden has deported this and these are not the only people I'm, but this was also a story that had a lot of propaganda these people has been deported because they didn't have enough uh, holidays because uh, there is always a collective agreement in any, in any industry related to uh, salary, working hours, um, uh, holidays, uh, everything, training. So if you didn't have even your holiday and because you didn't have your holiday because you are building your company uh, and you want to work hard to build it, Sweden will not be uh, happy with this. It w they will never appreciate. They wouldn't say, oh, well, this is good for you. You are trying to work hard. They say, no, you are burning yourself. This is not right. This is uh, unhealthy. You will be deported. So, um, yes, this is very something very important that you need to be careful about when you are uh, working in Sweden, anything related to, uh, to your holidays. Now, there is another very important part uh, offer employment that enables the employee to support oneself. In order to satisfy the support requirement, the employee needs to work to an extent that will result in a salary of at least 13,000 krona per month before taxes. Um, this is, there are two things that um, I want to uh, talk about here. First of all, and you have to be very careful, you are not allowed to be having two or three jobs to be covering this uh, salary. So for example, you couldn't work in Ica supermarket, and then you work in Coop supermarket, and then you work in Willis supermarket. So 30%, 30%, 40%, uh, so we can be having uh, the collective salary of 13,000 krona. You, have, you can, you are only allowed to be working in one place and uh, where you can get the salary of 13,000 krona before uh, before taxes um, where where you can get 13,000 krona before tax another thing which i feel it's a little bit unrealistic the salary of 13,000 because if you are going to be renting a place if you are going to be coming with your wife, so to find a place, to rent a place, at least, at least it will be 7,000 without any utilities. So, uh, and then you need a bus card, every, depending where do you live. And every one bus card, for example, for 1,000 krona, this is 9,000, and you have 1,000 for utilities, this is 10,000. And you are, if you are cooking everything at home, you are never having anything out, you are not having any dinners or lunch out, you will be uh, paying 3,000. So the 13,000 is like the minimum, minimum, minimum uh, salary you can have. And this is before taxes. When this is taxed, this means that you will be earning less than 10,000. So I do not know how uh, this is the requirement. Because, because actually, if you are having less than 10,000, Per month, you can hardly, especially if you have your partner, you can hardly uh, uh, have this amount of money covering you uh, for a month because of the rent. Because it, yeah, maybe if you are sharing a room or so, you can be you can be paying four thousand krona. But anyhow, this is the the minimum before tax. So now we have covered the thing related to advertisement and uh, to the, uh, the thing related to pension and insurance and the holidays and the minimum salary. Okay, so now we are going to be talking about the 24 month visa and when you come to Sweden uh, and starting your job. And maybe some of you say, Jasmine, we are not even with, in Sweden. Let's focus how to come to Sweden to work first and then we talk about the 24 month work, work permit visa. 
ladies and gentlemen this is where the trick happens that's why you need to listen to me closely focus leave everything or you can pause go and grab a cup of coffee or fika and come back now ready let's go so i will be talking here about the two frauds that happens uh, for people who are trying to obtain work permit visa legally but illegally what do i mean by legally uh, but illegally you are having a, a valid legal work permit visa on your passport it's a sticker which is not fake it's not false it's legal that has been issued from the swedish migration office but it is fraud how here it comes here yeah here the fraud comes some people uh, trafficker work trafficker they can take up to uh, 20,000 euros this is more almost almost quarter quarter a million Swedish krona for this visa and then you will do nothing with this visa except flushing it after you arrive in Sweden, if you came in winter, you will curse the moment you have landed in the country. Okay, we are not talking about the weather now, we are talking about the visa. They tell you we are going to, this is, there are two phases of the fraud. First phase of the fraud, they get you a visa, but the intention is that you will only work in a company for one year only and then they tell you hey do bye there's no place for you the second way of the fraud is there is no company this company that they hired you through it doesn't exist and they tell you from the beginning they are very honest we will get you the work permit visa this company doesn't exist in the first hand but when you arrive to sweden you can uh, uh, deal with the situation and you try to find a job after you arrive but the most important thing that you came to sweden in a very safe secure way you didn't come through a boat or anything you came uh, with a flight a ticket and everything is good and safe and you checked in very legally but there is no company uh, in the first place you will come and you'll start uh, looking for a job okay here we go i will tell you three um uh, Here we go. I will tell you three things about the work permit visa, the 24 months, and you will understand why this is a fraud because you end up returning back to your company, uh, to your country after spending this 20,000 uh, euros. That's why I say you are flushing it in the toilet. I'll be looking to my notes here. The, first of all, the 24 months uh, uh, visa. If you are coming to work, for example, if Fred came because he will be working in Volkswagen and after one year, Volvo, he went to meet Volvo and they, told him, they asked him, why don't you come and work with us? So uh, we are all going to offer you a, a better salary. So Fred decided to leave Volkswagen and he will go to work in Volvo. This doesn't work. He has to reapply for a work permit visa because within the first two years, the 24 months, he is not working with the same employer. So he needs to be reapplying for a work permit visa. But within the time the Swedish Migration Office are taking the decision, he can, st he can start working with Volvo till they get the decision. But is the decision guaranteed? No, you are not sure if you will get this new work permit visa accepted or not but within the time he is waiting for the decision he can go and work with Volvo after leaving Volkswagen because he should have stayed in Volkswagen for the first two years and then <clears throat> he can be changing employer so this is number one remember here very important critical thing if Fred went to work with Volvo and he was supposed to be working Volkswagen Volvo should have had 
the, the, the post advertised first for 10 days in the, uh, in, uh, within the Swedish uh, employment agency and um, everyone should have access to this uh, job first in Europe and Switzerland and then they can be recruiting um, friend. So if this job, it, the Swedish Migration Office found that this job hasn't been advertised and Fred through a friend or a, in a way or another went to work in Volvo and left Volkswagen, this uh, 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 work permit visa will be revoked. So start off, he has to make sure that this job has been advertised. He didn't know, in, he wasn't hired internally. Two, that he has to be uh, applying for a new work permit visa. If you want uh, to start uh, a new job after the two years visa, but this job is in the same company. For example, uh, um, Angelica has been uh, appointed to be working as a project manager in IKEA. She has been working there for three years, not even the, now, not the two years. For three years, she has been working, everything is perfect. But now her uh, employer says, oh, you're doing very well. You have had many trainings and you have uh, 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 performed uh, more than uh, well, then we are going to be promoting it to a di different, um, uh, different position. If her tasks will, she now finished the first two years, yes, and, and she got an extension, but her role or her responsibilities will be changed. She has to reapply for a new work permit visa because her responsibilities, her roles, her work, um, uh, her uh, job description has been changed. Although she's with the same employer, she's still with IKEA, but the tasks and the roles and responsibilities has been changed. She has to reapply for a new work permit visa with the new uh, uh, position that she has got. But she can still be working uh, with the new position. She can start having her new position while she's waiting for the decision from the Swedish Migration Office. But again, this job has to be advertised first. Okay? The third thing, if you got laid off, made redundant, the, 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 the company can't have you anymore because of um, bankruptcy or anything, or the company, had, the ownership of the company has changed. Someone else has bought this company. So uh, for example, we had Sarah owned the company and she was hiring Saeed. So Sarah decided to be uh, selling her company to Oliga. Said now is not working with Sarah. He is going to be working with Oliga. This is a change for ownership of the company. Said has to go and to reapply for his work permit because the ownership changed. Another thing, very important, if the registration organization, registration number of the company has changed, also, Said has to go and reapply for his work permit visa. So if, it, if he was, um, uh, the ownership of the company has changed or the uh, organization registration number has changed, then the employee, Said has to go and uh, reapply for a work permit visa. The thing with getting laid off or made redundant because of bankruptcy or, or if he resigned for any reason within the two years that he has uh, obtained from uh, the migration office, he had 24 months work permit, but he was laid off or he resigned. In this case, he has 
three months to look for a new job. Three months. If he resigned or he was made redundant the last two months, he may. And here I want to be stressing the word he may get an extension because he has he is allowed or permitted to stay in Sweden for three months to look for a new job and he was about to finish his first 24 months he finished, he, he, he resigned or he got laid off after 22 months of being on this work permit visa he may apply for an extension till he find a new job if he found a new job and this new job uh, is less than 24 uh, months visa, 24 months contract, again, he will need a new work permit visa. He's starting from scratch. He needs a new work permit visa. We have to remember here, this is also where sometimes the problem happens. If you are changing from one company to another, you need to make sure that your pension and your health insurance has been paid correctly. This is where lots of people get deported because the previous employer didn't pay the right pension or the right insurance.